Greeting to all of our viewers, wherever you're watching this program right now, I say to you by faith that your life will be blessed. Yes, you're watching Before 30, a faith-filled program on television that will change your life forever. And today's theme is called Collecting Faith for a Miracle. If you'd like to collect seashells, for instance, where do you go? You go to a beach to find them. If you want to collect shopping points, then you have to use your credit cards and shop more than before. If you want to collect air miles, you have to be a frequent flyer. But where do we collect faith for our miracle today? In this episode, I'm going to show you the place or the places where you could find your faith and you're certainly going to bump into your miracles. So let me assure you that before 30 minutes pass and this program is over, God is about to begin the most marvelous works in your life. Yes, any situation that you find is a deadlock in your life, God will unlock His miracles. Yes, your sins will be forgiven, any sicknesses in your body will be healed, and lives will be changed forever. So stay tuned with me, because the best is yet to come.
talking about collecting faith, let's go to the right address where faith is found. That is the Bible. Turn with me to Psalm chapter 57. Let's read verse 1. Have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy on me. For in you my soul takes refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. Here the psalmist says, and he prays to his God, Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Why do we need to believe in God before we experience His power? Why do we need faith in the first place for our miracles today? Because we are all mortals. We're all sinners. And we live in a different world from the world the Lord lives in. He lives in the heavenlies. He lives in heaven. We live down here on earth in an imperfect world. Yet, God hears us. He's all ears to those people who believe Him. We can right now invite His presence to be where we are, to intervene in our lives and change the course of our lives. He's a God who doesn't condemn us for our past. Therefore, we all must be encouraged to come to Him. Whatever problems we have, just come to Him because we are believing in a God who looks at us in our present. He treats us so kindly. Just like Jesus, never once in the Bible could you and I find a story in which Jesus ever rejected someone who came to Him believing for their miracles, for their healings. He always receives us warmly. So it's okay to feel unworthy to begin with. If you are guilty of anything, if you feel in your heart something is condemning you, just confess that to Jesus and move on. Yes, get it over with. Get it over with with guilt and start collecting your faith a step at a time and you're nearing your miracle more than you realize you're a step closer to your breakthrough. Now let's start our adventure of collecting that faith. We've got to go to the right address. We've got to go to the right place. And the first place for faith is always in who God is, not in what He can do. Even if we have to believe in what Jesus can do, first of all, we must believe in what He has done 2,000 years ago on the cross for you and me. Let me just read again verse 1, part of verse 1. The psalmist hereby says, For in you, O God, my soul takes refuge. Again, he says that my faith is in you, is in who he, who the Lord is, in who you are, not in what you can give me. But even if I believe, I'd like to believe in what you can do, I will first of all believe in what you have done for me. Faith is already settled on the cross. You can believe God. It doesn't matter how small your faith is or how large. Faith is not about size. As long as faith exists in your heart and you've got faith in the right person, Jesus Christ, your faith counts for something and your faith is eligible for a miracle. In you I take refuge. Not only that, he says, I will also take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. When we are suffering of anything that is prolonged, when we have to wait for a miracle, for our miracle for a period of time, when miracle doesn't seem to come instantly, then we need to persevere. Not persevere in sufferings, we are suffering already, but persevere in faith through that suffering. The Bible teaches us that we should take refuge in the shadow of God's wings. How can we collect faith when we have to wait for a miracle that never seems to come in our lives? The shadow of the wings of God hereby are testimonies of those people who have been set free. Their stories are also a source of encouragement and faith to you. Do you know that other people's faith could be transferred into your account? Yes, that account in your heart that's empty of belief or weak, others can encourage you. God could use the testimonies of others to shadow you and lift you up as if you're flying on the wings of an eagle. 
You're being encouraged, strengthened by the stories of other people who have been healed before you, who have been set free before you receive your own breakthrough. Make sure you look up to these people. Be careful of what input you allow into your soul. Don't listen to those people who are pessimistic, those people who do not believe, those people who could discourage you. But find the stories of those people who have been miraculously changed by the Lord. And start saying to yourself, if God can do it for them, God can do it for me. My God also loves me and He has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Again, if your heart condemns you, if all of a sudden you feel like you are not qualified for that miracle, you should confront that feeling with the truth of the Word of God, who is qualified anyway. The Bible says, another part of Psalms that says, if you, Lord, if you, have, if you recorded a list of sins, who could stand before thee? Who could stand before you? No one could. No one is worthy. In this world, nobody is holy. So if, can, if God can do it for them, God can do it for you. And if you have confessed your sin to Him, you have no legal reason whatsoever to feel guilty anymore. The blood of Jesus has washed you free, has washed you clean. So now you can be affirmative in your faith. You say to, your, to yourself, and when you pray to God, you could claim His goodness. You could say with a, with a, with a strong voice in your spirit, yes, I'm awaiting for my miracle. My hope will not disappoint me. And that, my friend, is the shadow of the Almighty's wings. That is what it means to hide in His shadow. It is not to hide away. It is actually to find strength to fly on someone else's wings, namely Christ's, through other people whom He has set free and through their stories. And I pray that as you see all these video clips of those people who are, who are testifying of their miracles, I believe and I pray that God shall strengthen you and you'll find your miracles this very day. Collecting faith for a miracle, let's continue the reading of the scriptures. Verse 2 now, I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills His purpose for me. You might as well collect His purpose while collecting faith for your miracle. You know, sometimes miracle comes immediately. There are times when miracle comes a little later, but God is always on time. In the case of Lazarus, he died for a few days already. Yet, Jesus always came on time. When He rescues, He rescues in His time. But while waiting for that, that divine timing to come, don't just sit around waiting for your miracle. Fill your life with something useful and purposeful. Just a little tip. If you want to find God's purpose, turn to the pages of the Bible. There, then, and there, you will find not only your life purpose, but your daily purpose as well. And then first, 3 says, He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. Sila, or pause. God sends His love and His faithfulness. This is beautiful. The long wait has finally paid off. Miracle indeed has come. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. Jesus is finally there for our rescue. He's finally here. There's the word sila here, which means pause. That is that empty space that people couldn't explain how miracles takes place. It just does. A miracle just takes place. Don't try to teach God how He should perform His miracle. He knows what to do. Just be in complete surrender. Fill your life with purposeful things, useful stuff. And keep collecting your faith. You cannot have too much faith in your life. Just collect as much as you can. And your miracle, when it comes, it will surprise you. It's gonna happen in a fashion that you wouldn't understand. And your mind will be so blank, Sheila, because your mind couldn't just make sense what has just happened to your body, to your life, to your marriage, to your family. 
to your business. But when it comes, you will only say, God sends His love and His faithfulness. Oh, God is love. God loves me. Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. And I, now I'm experiencing His love firsthand. He is faithful. You see, when miracle hits you, that's gonna be the confession from your mouth out of your heart. I pray for your miracle. Indeed, really. I really pray for each and every one of you. I'm believing that we are on air for a purpose. As a channel. Yes, as a channel of His strength, His power, His love to channel God's miracle to each and every one who believes. Again, let me say, in the Bible's never written, Jesus ever rejected anyone who came to Him believing for their miracles and healings. And God will not reject you. I've got a testimony I want to share with you as a conclusion to my teaching that I'm giving you today. Someone once asked me, Pastor Philip, when you pray for somebody, when you lay hand on someone with a great need, what goes through your mind? Well, let me tell you now. I've always fixed my eyes, my heart, my all upon Jesus. The revelation of who Jesus is must be greater than the fact, the reality of that person's impossible situation. Let's not be intimidated and have no faith in the end to help anybody. Faith is found in confessing who Jesus is in any given situation. So before I remind that person I'm ministering to, I'll remind myself in my spirit who Jesus is. With all the biblical knowledge I've got, I would bombard my own soul with a revelation of Jesus, who He is and what He has done. Therefore, I believe in what He can do for this person now. Faith is found that way. So when I close my eyes, even if I don't close my eyes and I look up into the sky, I would keep confessing again and again, Jesus, you are the savior of this person, even though this person's uh, condition is so terrible, beyond hope, beyond help. But I believe there's nothing impossible with you. You are almighty. Yes, you are almighty. You are greater than anything. This is nothing. This condition cannot match your power. Greater is the rescue than the need. Greater is the power that is within me than whatever this person, whatever is hindering this person from experiencing your miracle. I will confess who Jesus is and I will quote unquote hide in the shadow of His wings. I remind myself that in the past God has helped people with impossible situations too. And if God did it before in the past, God will do it now because He has not changed. And I'm gonna overcome my fear and help overcome the fear of the patient that is, has put their hope in Jesus Christ. That's what I do. And that, my friend, is how I collect faith when I pray. In fact, I recall what happened to me in my early walk with Christ. Just weeks into my newfound life in Jesus, all these demon spirits that had left me weeks ago came back to taunt me. They were trying to possess me again. Didn't Jesus already warn us in the scriptures that when demon spirits leave, they leave a body, they would wander for a while and they would come back missing their former home and they're gonna check things out, whether that home is empty or filled with the Word of God. If it were empty, they would come back bringing seven other friends who are more evil than he is and the person's condition would be worse than ever before. And that I experienced. But in my case, I was filled with the Word of God. Yes, I fellowship with Jesus each and every day, so they, had, they stood no chance. But these demon spirits were the stubborn kind. They would let me go without, without giving me a good fight, without trying hard. So for three hours, I was attacked under this terrible invasion of the demon spirits. I don't know whether you're familiar with the spiritual warfare, especially in some parts of the world, demons are more manifest. Here I was, I was choked sometimes. I couldn't even make any, no voice could come out of me. I couldn't even scream for help. And I would struggle to be, to, to be free from their, from their attack on me. For three hours on end, I battled them and I grew tired. 
even though they couldn't enter me, but I wasn't, they wouldn't let me, let me go. They wouldn't set me, they wouldn't release me. They kept coming at me. But the Holy Spirit taught me a very precious lesson. He encouraged me from within me because He already abides in me. He says to me, in order for you to overcome these demon spirits, I'm gonna teach you how to fight. You've got to overcome your own doubt and fear within you. In order to do that, you have to find faith. Start collecting faith now by thinking of who Jesus is in this situation. Right now, in the midst of this heated warfare, I fix my eyes upon who Jesus Christ is. Even though I couldn't say anything, I could say it in my heart. Jesus, you are my savior. You are my redeemer. Your blood has set me free. Who the son of man sets free, he is free indeed. I begin reciting scriptures, scriptures that I had come across days before or even that day. I begin to just think of who Jesus Christ is and will always be to me. And I found strength. And I remember, I remind myself, I reminded myself of my friends who've been set free before me. Look at their lives now, they are bearing fruits. So could I bear fruits. I have to win this war. The devil must flee. So I remember this one scripture that says, submit yourself to God and resist the devil. He will flee from you found in the book of James. And I recited that in my heart and I grew stronger and stronger and stronger. And all of a sudden I felt the Lord's presence at my right hand. Yes, I felt someone holy in white robes standing on my right hand. And when I felt that presence, immediately I grew so strong, I overcame all these demon spirits combined as one. And I said, in Jesus' name, yes. Finally, a voice came out of my mouth. I said, in Jesus' name, you get thee behind me forever and ever. And they fled and never to come back. My friend, I found strength. I collected faith for three hours fighting the demon spirits tangibly, physically, even though they are spiritual beings. Just by thinking who Jesus is and believing. And by reminding myself, if other, spe other people could now live freely in God's grace, I could too. With these two sources of my strength and faith, I overcame the enemy of my life. All those demons that had once possessed me, I have defeated them. And I have defeated them until today. I keep defeating them again and again. As long as my feet are firmly grounded on the revelation of who Jesus is and what He has done, I will keep winning. And I will walk from a miracle, from glory to glory, from a miracle to miracle, another one, to another miracle. So could you, so can you also today, receive your miracle and walk by faith from one miracle to the next one that He has provided for you. Receive your miracle. Tiga tahun yang lalu sebelah kaki kiri Bapak ini mengalami struk sehingga tidak bisa berfungsi dengan baik. Lalu tiga minggu yang lalu sebelah kanannya juga sehingga menyebabkan Bapak ini tidak bisa kehilangan keseimbangan dan dan apa terus dan kalau berjalan Bapak ini akan jatuh. Uh, tiga minggu itu mengalami putus asa kemarin, kemarin ikut live streaming karena Bapak dengan ibu ini berasal dari Madiun Ketika live streaming semenjak dimulainya Bapak ini terus menangis dan berdoa Aku pengen sembuh Tuhan, aku, aku pengen sembuh Dan hari ini Bapak ini datang dari Madiun ke sini Tugas uh, tujuan utamanya mau check up Tapi ketika tadi turun dari mobil tiba-tiba Biasanya dibantu sama istrinya Karena harusnya pakai tongkat tapi karena malu dibantu sama istrinya Tapi tadi langsung turun sendiri loh Berkata loh kok aku bisa jalan cepat begitu Dan mujizat terjadi Belum Bapak ini disembuhkan Ayo jalan sama saya Ya yeah. Ya, oh Tuhan terima kasih. Sebelumnya nggak bisa begini ya. Sebelumnya nggak bisa begini. Anda jatuh, selalu jatuh, selalu jatuh biasanya ya. Oh Haleluya. Tuhan itu baik. Berhenti di sini Bapak. Tuhan itu baik sekali dalam kehidupan Anda. Terjadilah sesuai dengan iman Anda. Anda pulang bisa latihan terus jalan sampai Anda bisa biasa kembali jalan tanpa alat bantu apa-apa. Terima kasih Tuhan untuk kesembuhan yang Kau berikan pada Bapak ini dalam nama Yesus. Amen. God bless you. Berita tepuk tangan. Now let's believe for a miracle. You have collected faith enough. Now it's time to experience your miracle. Would you pray with me? I want to pray for you whatever needs you have. Let's believe that Jesus Christ 
is not only the Redeemer and the Savior, He is also the healer. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now let's stretch our hands forward, everyone. Yes, please believe with me that Jesus will come for your rescue. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We come to you in Jesus' name. Oh, dear Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Welcome wherever our viewers are. You are in the midst of us. There is Sheila. There's that room between myself and all of the viewers right now. There's a room for you to work your miracles. You work in the most mysterious ways, but the results are always tangible. Lord Jesus, touch everyone who's hurting in Jesus' name. Set people free right now. And I've just seen somebody, a woman with a short hair who's suffering from breast cancer. You've been given a short time to live. That is by the diagnosis of your doctor and your doctor hasn't, hasn't lied. He's telling you the truth. But here is the truth above all truth. This is God's truth, not just human truth. That you are gonna live much longer than predicted because you are gonna be free of cancer. Your body will be clean of any cancerous cell because Jesus is healing you right now. You may be feeling a little weak right now, it's okay. But when the Holy Spirit is touching you now, all those demon spirits, some sicknesses are caused by demonic forces and yours too. In Jesus' name, I rebuke those spirits to leave your body this instantly. Receive your miracle. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Though I cannot mention one by one what the Lord has done, I could feel in my spirit there are so many miracles taking place in this episode. Do write to us so we too can be encouraged. God bless you until the next episode. Stay faithful to the Lord.